Hi everybody. Okay, so we are back for some more fun stuff here. So we did the pink and uh, marbled resin. Eric carved the resin and it came out incredible. My husband's the best carver, whatever. Oh. Oh. So then he sprayed it, sanded off the black. Now what we did, because we've learned from past experience, this is exposed wood. It's got the black ink on it, but it's still uh, exposed wood, basically. When, is that what you would call it? Well, it's not sealed, for sure. It's not sealed. So, no. it wasn't sealed. So, what Eric did, because of, like I said, past experience, when it hit the resin hits that, it will bubble. It will, uh, yeah, you'll get bubbles in it. So, Eric sprayed all of the lettering with this uh, little, this, uh, <laughs> What is it? Krylon crystal clear uh, top coat, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we, again, sanded it down a little bit just to rough it up. But that should seal all of that and hopefully lessen the likely of bubbles. So that's what and, we did. And I actually uh, just, one of the, I sprayed the edges too. Oh yes, I'm sorry. He sprayed the edges because that's painted also, sprayed with the ink. So what I did was I Primer. mixed up. Huh? Primer primer yeah. whatever sorry yeah. primer it's black stuff. Yeah. black stuff um so i did the calculator the art resin calculator um to figure out how much resin i would need it said that i would need 24 ounces that's 12 ounces of resin and 12 ounces of hardener i made 28 ounces simply because this is not a flat cover it's got the uh, carving in it so the resin is going to go down in there so that that's to fill that and if i need more i can always add more after an hour or so um so here we go okay so you're using art resin uh as far as what what product what epoxy. art resin yeah yeah art resin yeah you want to bring up the bottles i don't know if you want to I, oh, they I love, I right. used art resin there, so I'm going to finish it with the art resin. So, here we go. Okay. Get it back off. Uh-oh, that's not enough. We say that Patience, my love, patience. <laughs> if it's not enough, we'll make more. Did you stir that for like about four minutes? I stirred it actually for like five minutes. I wanted to really get, get it good. Make sure all of these letters are filled with resin. That looks good. Look at how pretty that is. Well, we may have to make a little bit more, but we'll see. And we're going to do something completely different on the um, on the edge, guys. So after this gets all done from an epoxy standpoint, then I'm going to uh, then I'll get back on the this project and do something different on the the edges. It's kind of starting to drip over that front edge. Yeah, I think we're going to have enough. It's pretty thick over those big letters right now. I can see it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's there. puddled pretty good. Yeah. Can you tell if I covered all this? or? Uh, it still needs a little bit more. I can feel it. There you go. Now that looks like it's Yeah, you color. can feel the difference because it's rough when you yeah. run your hand over yeah. it. So. And now it's smooth because it's yeah. got the resin on it. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. No, I think we're good. If that, you know, if this kind of soaks in or dips down a little bit, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Gonna look good. Well, it's a pretty color in it. That marbling in there just looks so cool. Pink 
Christina will like it. I hope so. Yeah, we did good there. Yeah, it was pretty good. I think you were right on the money as far as how much to mix. this morning and sliced my arm. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty. Give me one second here and I will change my glove and use my torch here. Make sure everything... And again, this stuff is self-leveling, so it's going to level out. And you used your Dixie Cup technique my to Dixie level cup. the board. Right? Love my Dixie Cup technique. Oh, you can get it glimpse of them right there. There's our Dixie Cups. Everything looks smooth over there? It does, yeah. Things awesome. Where'd you get that? Amazon. Okay. Oh, Is it in the store yet? No. I haven't. <laughs> I guess I gotta put propane in it or there we go. There butane. Look at that. It's adjustable. This thing's awesome. So you like that better than the other one? You I had, do. You I like this better than yours even because I can hold on to it better. Yeah, I would imagine. the plastic because yeah. I just use reuse this plastic and peel the thing off. And that, some of that stuff is sharp. That's how you slice That's your That's how arm. I slice my arm this morning, yeah. Yeah, beware of... Uh, that resin, let me tell you, when it dries and you peel it off there, that stuff's sharp. It'll slice the crap out right of Wow. That looks spectacular. All right. We're really digging it. All right, I see another I'm one. Digging it. And I hear a fly. Oh, we're gonna cover this thing with a drape. You will see that because yeah, the that, other day, one of my tables we had a fly dried in it. <laughs> it was yeah. terrible. Yeah. So, okay. So we'll come back after we uh, after we tarp it then. No, well, show, and show them what that looks. We're like. gonna let it set for a few minutes so that I can. Just keep an eye on the uh, bubbles that might possibly come up. But if you look down in here, these bubbles are like nada. There's like no bubbles. There's a few here that are coming up, but so we'll keep an eye on that. But the red, the putting that finish in there really made a huge difference. So there are a few coming up. So I'll just keep an eye on those. But we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll show you how we put the tarp on it. Or it's not a tarp, a drape. So we will be back. Okay, so this is our drape, our tent. Um, we've just got three boards across it to give it the uh, tent effect so that it does not touch the resin. Now I will come back every, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes and check for bubbles. We do have one little spot on the L here, right in the corner, that's bubbling pretty good, but that shouldn't be a problem. And then, um, once so it's what is that plastic? What is the plastic? I went to Home Depot and got the rolled um, painters, uh, what is that? Drop cloth. Drop cloth. It's like three rolls for like, I don't know, four or five dollars. Super cheap. And it's yeah. very thin, very cheap, um, but there's a lot of it. So I just cut the pieces to where they're really big and I still have, I don't know, half a roll. So that's all that is, just cheap drop cloth from Home Depot. Um, that way if I have to throw it away, it's not a big deal. So anyway, that's that. We will come back once it's dry and then we'll go to the next step. You guys have a good day. 
Good morning. So we are going to uh, clear off the back of this uh, beautiful disaster sign. And Eric's been talking about this disc sander. I love this thing. This makes this cleaning up these bubbles so much easier. And I know a lot of people will put tape down and then, um, you know, just peel it off. I have found for myself that doesn't necessarily work quite as easy as it sounds because you got to heat up the resin and all that kind of stuff and this just is easier for me and I really like this thing. So I'm going to sand it off with this. I'm just going to do a little bit, show you how I use the disc sander and then how I go back and kind of clean it up with the uh, orbital sander. So. Here we go. Got so what grit do you have on there? I'm sorry. I have the I have a 40 grit on here. I have a 40 grit on here. I'm going to have a 40 grit on the orbital sander. And the reason I use a 40 grit on both of them, this 40 grit will kind of mar up this wood pretty good. So the other orbital sander with the 40 grit will smooth it out. And then I'll go back over it with like a 220 just to kind of smooth it out right before we put the final finish on the back. So that is it. I'm going to get started on this. I'm going to tuck this under so that it doesn't catch in my sander. Ugh, fine, it's heavy. All right, we're going to get started. I'm going to put my mask on because this is a lot of resin that we're sanding off of here. All right, here we go. I don't like that. There we go. Oop. Should we have power out here? Oh, probably not. <laughs> Hold on. Hold that thought. See, this thing's awesome. Really works well. Just kind of use the tip of it here. I don't put the whole thing down flat. I just use the edge of it here. Ready. Here we go. Quick work, yeah, it? it does. Very quick work. And you can see how it kind of mars, sorry, mars it up a little bit. This one here, this little orbital will smooth it out. I just get the most of it off of there and then take care of the rest of it with this one. <laughs> basically all I do and then again after I get everything cleaned up then I'll go back with the 220 smooth it out put a finish on and put the final sand on it and then do a finish on it and then we're done with that so I just wanted to show you that um, again I just use the edge of this I don't I don't put the whole thing down flat because this thing will take off on me so I just kind of hold it up really really lightly just with control and um, it works amazing. So 
I just wanted to show you how I do that. I'm going to finish it off uh, camera and then Eric's going to take it from there. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, so we are moving on. We're almost done with this thing. I wanted to show you what I did on here. Um, I left extra all the way around and I decided to put an actual exterior frame. I went down and got some molding. Uh, I think we got it at Home Depot and it didn't come black like this. It come wood color, uh, but I just um, mitered the corners and put it on uh, and then uh, tacked it on with my uh, with my pin nailer and now I have to go back and putty the holes and I'm going to show you how I do that and, and just kind of touch it up all, all the way around kind of touch it up so um, I've done this end I've already kind of like completed this end pretty happy with the way it looks but what I'm doing so here's my little pin holes I'm using the RAND gate system with the knot filler. I've got the black in. So I just do like two holes at a time. Put my block on there. Let it set for a few seconds. Just the weight of the block will flatten it out. Um, but then I'm also uh, need to kind of touch it up beyond there. Now I tried to fill these holes, I uh, kind of experimented. I had a little scrap piece that I experimented with a little bit here, different ways to fill the holes. I tried uh, the star bond, I tried the uh, wood filler, uh, and they all kind of, they all kind of turned out about the same. So um, I'm using the RAND gate. I think this is uh, probably the best of the three simply because it's already black. So what I need to do now is just trim that off. It worked much easier off camera, <laughs> of course. Yeah, without taking a chunk, huh? Yeah, that's the, that's the trick. But that doesn't look too bad. So now I just take a little piece of sandpaper. I'm going to sand it a little bit. And then what I found, I could have let that dry a little bit more, but what I found is I've got a little brush that someone sent me. This looks like a felt pen, like a Sharpie, but it's not really. This is actually a brush. It actually has... Uh, down towards the pink. Oh, okay. There you go. That's all you need. It actually is uh, like a calligraphy brush. Um, so it has, rather than being a felt tip, those are actually bristles on the end. And this seemed to work the best for blending in with that, that primer with the clear on it. It's not perfect, but um, it doesn't look too bad. And then I'll go back. Oh, by the way, this brush. Uh, so this is made by Pentel, and it's GFKP. You probably can't even see that. It's so small. I almost need my cheaters, but Pentel GFKP. But it's kind of cool. Um, I, I tried the Rev marker, I tried the Tombow, I tried the Sharpie, and nothing worked as good as that one for this particular application. So then what I'll do is after that dries, then I'll take and, um, where's my little block? I'll take the finish that I used on the outside of here and I will just then uh, spray that again to bring that gloss back up. Probably should let it dry a little bit more. And that is pretty much it. So I'm going to do that all the way around. The other thing is um, what I found this brush works good for is when you look at this from the end, from the edge that is, let me 
move this. When you look at this from the edge, you can see the wood underneath there. And this is gonna be hanging up on a wall, I believe. So I found that um, this brush, again, I don't know if I'm, the angle is right here. No. find that brush fits right down in that groove and will kind of cover that uh, that wood it does cover it may not look like it on camera but it definitely does I know that my camera angle is off so it kind of covers the pink of the resin and then the underside of the the board so it kind of blends anyway so it works good for that, uh, that instance as well. But um, so what I'm gonna do, I think I've covered pretty much everything. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up off camera, come back, uh, show you what we're gonna do for hanging it and wrap this thing up because it's pert near done. Well, there it is folks, we're all done. Finally, we got it completed. Um, so from the last scene, the last thing you saw, I was putting these holes and then like marking them with a pin to cover them up. And uh, I got all done and I just wasn't happy with it at all. I just didn't like the way the frame looked. It looked splotchy. You could really see the, um, the nail holes. The putty, it just, I just didn't like it. So what I decided to do is take a piece of 220, I sanded the whole thing down frame-wise, sanded the whole thing down, and literally I hand-painted the whole frame again with uh, one shot. I had a can of black one shot, and I'm super happy with the way it came out. It looks very consistent. It's got a great shine on it um, on the on the front but even on the edges it's got a great shine um, and, and again you can see the little putty holes if you look really really close but for all intents and purposes you can't see them they're pretty much hidden so I'm super happy with the way it came out I'm glad I took the extra time and put the one shot on it so um, as far as the hanging hardware I decided to go with uh, the hangman products which we've showed before which is really a cool system if you guys haven't seen it it's a French cleat Let's see if I can do this it's a French cleat so this is mounted on the board and then you have a second piece that mounts on the wall and when you mount it on the wall it has a little level that goes in this slot that tells you when the thing is level now I'm going to turn it around because you know this is the back in order this would be the wall and then it just it just clips on there and so you can take it down when you want to so it's a French cleat system but it's made uh, with uh, aluminum but I love this thing found out about it from uh, Lizzie over at um, House of Timber but anyway it's really a cool system very simple to use I lost my microphone so something just happened with the sound sorry about that so um, anyway that is uh, that is that super duper happy with the way it came out so again thank you to christina over at beautiful disaster such a pleasure meeting you and uh, by the time you see this we will have delivered this hopefully it's hanging up in their warehouse over there and if you guys haven't checked out christina and jamie over at beautiful disaster you got to go see what they're doing over there uh, amazing amazing company i was just so um, impressed with the whole operation so that is it thank you again so much and if you have any questions, eric at makeawoodsign.com. Um, if you don't know where the channel is, it's right there, Old Dave 100, or am I covering it up? There it is, Old Dave 100. And we would love it for you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And don't forget to click that little bell icon because we do four videos a week now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And um, we got lots of things going on. Big projects coming up. So if you have any questions, let me know. Eric at MakerWoodSign.com or did I say that already? I probably did. Anywho, we love you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you liked it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.